and welcome back. Hopefully you had the opportunity to grab a bottle of water or a quick coffee. And now I've been joined by uh, Lara and Rhiannon. So great to have you with us. And we're going to be talking about the new psychology curriculum that has been introduced for 2022. You'll notice that on the screen we now have a widget and we love a widget. This widget is a word cloud. And what we want you to do is we want you to put in the name of a TV show where psychology plays a significant role. Okay, you'll need to put three different shows in because that's the way it works, but the instructions are on the screen. And we'll have a look in a few minutes at um, what you all think. So HJ, of course, is going to be looking after your comments and we'll be dipping into those as we go through. So first of all, we're going to start off with a, a discussion about F92. It, it sounds like a plane, doesn't it? Um, F92 is the Masters of Science in Psychology, the conversion course. And D810 is Critically Exploring Psychology Part 1. So, Lara, can you tell me what these are and what we can expect to see if we go on and study these modules with you? Absolutely. F92, like you said, is the MSc Psychology Conversion, and this is a two-year qualification with two modules, the first of which is D810, Critically Exploring Psychology 1. Now, the qualification has been accredited by the British Psychological Society, or the BPS, and this responds to Eustace's question um, in the chat about it is um, accredited by the BPS. What BPS accreditation gives you is it gives you the graduate, ba graduate basis for chartered membership. So you can then go on um, on other accredited degrees or you can at this point um, become a member of the BPS and you are considered um, a qualified psychologist. And the qualification is going to be delivered via blended learning, which means that some tutorials are going to be face to face and we are really excited about this. D810 specifically will focus on three of the core areas of psychology, and those are three of the core areas that the BPS requires psychology students to learn. Those three are social psychology, cognitive psychology, and biological uh, psychology. There's also a focus on research methods, and in D810, students will be learning both about quantitative and qualitative research methods. So really, it's a very big module. Excellent. I hadn't realised psychology has got so many facets to it. Um, so, quite a large module. How, how do you help the students fit it all in? Because there seems to be an awful lot going on. Yeah, <laughs> there is. And actually, I'm wondering if, Rhiannon, do you want to answer this one? Yeah, of course. So throughout the whole module, there's lots of teaching and um, there's also a lot, quite a few assessments. We've got five different assessments um, and we're really supporting our students. So each student will have their own tutor, forming a tutor group of up to 15. And you've really got that tutor group support all the way through. We're going to use tutorial rooms. We're going to use forums. We've got email. We've got telephone. There's loads of support along with the module materials to really enhance that learning throughout the year. So there's lots of tutorials, lots of support, and lots of resources to really guide those students. And for those research methods, we're going to have a research methods portfolio which is going to be in print and students are going to be able to annotate and highlight and make all of those notes on those research methods um, which is going to be really handy when they then go on to our next module for their dissertations. Well, so lots of interactions, lots of technology. Do they have to be technical experts to do this? It sounds like you need to be a bit of a computer whiz. Well, absolutely <laughs> not. So after students have registered, there's going to be lots of resources to be able to help students get to know the OU way of studying. So there's going to be resources available um, to help them get established with the library, for example, uh, how to find their way around what our VLE, our virtual learning environment. Uh, so there's going to be lots of people on hand to be able to support them. And obviously, once they start, their tutors are going to be absolute experts in the technology, as well as um, as well as the content as well. So if you're not a tech wizard, there's no need to worry. Okay. So well, D810, so this uh, Critically Exploring Psychology Part 1, 
who's intended who's that intended for what's what students would you expect to want to sign up for that particular module yeah go on laura oh. Oh, sorry, okay. <laughs> Laura, I should have passed to you for that. Sorry, Rhiannon. <laughs> no, no, not to worry at all. Um, so this is really for students who already have an undergraduate degree, but not a degree in psychology. So mm -hmm. students who maybe got a degree, let's say, in English or in biology and have decided they actually want to go back and re-specialize as psychologists. So what this um, qualification does, and DA10 being the first half of it, is it gives them all of the basis of what they need in psychology to know the material so they can go on. Um, but you do have to have an undergraduate degree to enroll on F92 and on D810. Okay, perfect. So we've, we've talked about a lot of the things that they might study. We've talked about the resources. So what types of skills do you think we will see these students developing as they work through D810? What, what do you expect them to be able to do at the end they couldn't do at the beginning? Um, lots. I, I think lots. there are going to be ton, <laughs> tons and tons of skills that they're going to be able to do. Um, so D810 has you know, some of the, the stuff that Rhiannon was talking about in terms of learning about different skills, learning about different content. Um, and some of that is going to be assessed by different um, assessment methods. Um, we're going to be teaching students how to critically evaluate psychological research, psychological theory. We're going to be able to, or students will be able to present this in different ways. So we've got some essays that students are going to be writing for the assessments. They'll be reading original psychological research, but they'll also be reading and writing actual research reports. And they're going to be learning how to analyze the data. Um, so students are going to develop all of these skills. Um, but they're also going to learn some postgraduate skills kind of more generally. So they're going to learn about communication. They're going to learn about academic writing. Um, they're going to be able to develop those sorts of skills and really those data analytical skills, which are so crucial to psychology. We're going to be taking them through with that methods portfolio that Rihanna mentioned so that they can read about it. They can practice it on the virtual learning environment um, and they can take notes as they go with all of the support. And that's just a sampling of some of the skills we'll be learning. Oh, I think it's fantastic the way we can use different ways of assessing people now with videos and with posters. It's a long cry from just sending a, an essay through the post. Uh, <laughs> let's have a quick catch up with the word cloud. Let's see how you've all been doing. Um, so, HJ, would you like to talk us through the word cloud? Yeah, I'm really excited because I had to think of it a bit myself. <laughs> and I'm sure there's way more that, uh, than I thought initially. But uh, we're thinking in the chat that it uh, could be criminal mind, Sherlock Holmes, silent witness, criminal intent, Dexter, Hannibal, <laughs> The Office, CSI, The Mentalist, The Fool, Luther, Cracker, House, Airplane 2, any crime drama, um, Big Little Lies, uh, FBI task force programs, <laughs> Bones, Lost, NCIS. So lots of great ideas in the chat. I think the problem is when I hear about all these good TV shows that might have psychology <laughs> in, I've always had the temptation to start watching them and then that's my day's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's, all I can say is thank goodness for streaming. We can go and binge watch now. We don't have to set time aside <laughs> each week. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Lara and Rhiannon, were those the sorts of shows you were expecting to see popping up for that question? Absolutely, yeah. So, I'm, I'm sure Rhiannon would agree with me, but we think psychology is relevant in so many aspects of everyday life. So, certainly, it's the sort of things that we would expect to see. And on top of that, I think some of the forensic ones really do tap into um, kind of psychology and behavior and trying to understand um, background and how somebody got to a particular place at this point in their life. So it's absolutely what I would expect to see. And those are some of those are really great shows. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so from a practical sense, you've already mentioned the accreditation of the module. Uh, what sort of careers would you expect people to move into after taking the, the conversion course? Yeah, that's a really great question because careers is really important to us um, 
within the qualification, but also on 810. So when you look at the qualification, so the master's psychology conversion, um, within that qualification site, we're going to have lots of different resources to help students kind of think about what their next steps are. They'll also have access to the OU career service as well. But then when we think about D810 specifically, We've embedded videos with different professionals, which all have a background in psychology. So students can really begin to understand what they can do with this degree, where it may lead to, what further training they may need to go on to do. And then we've also embedded one-to-one -one sessions for all students who study D810. Um, so that's gonna come towards the latter end of the module. And it's gonna be a really good opportunity for those students to then think about, you know, what is next? What can I do over the summer to help me you know, pave that way and what am I going to do for my dissertation and what is the long term goal here? And we know that some people may not know, some people may know exactly and, and we expect a lot of students to be in between. But 810 is really going to start to get students to carve out that pathway of, and think about really what's next. Fantastic. And I'm so glad you mentioned the career service because often people forget that we're not just about giving qualifications. There's lots of advice and support there as well. And the career service is fantastic, even to the extent of arranging internships for people. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, so a real opportunity to consider a change of career, a change of direction. Yeah, thank absolutely. Oh, sorry. Carry on, Rhiannon. Sorry. No, I was just going to really highlight that, that, you know, anyone who's looking for a career change, anyone who fancies, you know, further training in psychology and, you know, you're really interested in that human behaviour and understanding more about it, D810 is absolutely for you. <laughs> Brilliant. It's, yes, I'm looking for my next module. I think that's, uh, that's one I'll definitely <laughs> be putting on the list. <laughs> so, HJ, hey, what are we hearing from uh, the chat at the moment? So just a very quick fire question. So Katie's asked, um, we've said that we need an undergraduate degree to do this. Is there a specific classification that we need? And is there a specific length of time? So say we did our degree 10 years ago, could we now do the conversion? Yeah, so you absolutely can. There's no limit on when you've done your undergraduate degree until when you come on to the MSc psychology conversion. In terms of classification, typically it is a 2-2. Um, but if you if your degree classification is lower than a 2-2, that shouldn't stop you. What you can do is you can get in touch um, with someone at the OU um, because there might be a variety of reasons why you had a different degree and so it might be worth speaking to someone um it's not a definite no way no how if you have under that so, oh fantastic i know question. we're really excited <laughs> in the chat about this one but yeah thank you for answering our question brilliant thank you um so just um, in terms of the uh, when the modules run so d810 when does that start in the year because they i know they all start in different dates so which month would we typically begin d810 yeah absolutely so d810 is what we call an i presentation at the open university which means that we start in september and um, so we start in september and we've got 36 teaching weeks in total so it takes us through um pretty much to the middle of the summer after everything's been wrapped up and results have been ratified and, and everything like that so it's it pretty much mirrors uh, an academic year, perhaps what people would, would think about. Brilliant, thank you very much. And I can't believe it, we're out of time again. So Lara and Rhiannon, thank you so much for that. And um, fascinating opportunity there. And perhaps people hadn't considered psychology as an option before, but perhaps they thought they'd miss the boat, but really good opportunities presented there. So we're going to take a short break again and we'll be back to look at the new social sciences and global studies curriculum in a few minutes. So thanks again, everyone, and I'll see you all in a few moments. <laughs>